Well, hello everybody. I'm Adam Savage and I am here in my cave uh, and I've got a tool tip today. Uh, the first time I had to delineate between one kind of wrench and another it was long before I was making things. It was when I was a kid and there was a scavenger hunt. And they said, find an Allen wrench. And one could easily look at the two phrases, Allen wrench and crescent wrench, and think that they might have something to do with each other. But then you go and you look at them and you see that this is an Allen wrench and this is a crescent wrench. And well, it turns out that wrenches go all over the place. So in the interest of uh, continuing wrench education, uh, I'd like to talk about a wrench that most of you became familiar with in Bugs Bunny cartoons. Oh, you now know the one that I mean, yes, the monkey wrench. This wrench, which admittedly looks somewhat primitive because, well, like a lot of things that look primitive, like coelacanths and chickens, um, it's because <laughs> their, their, their origins date back to antiquity. And uh, similar to sharks, uh, they haven't changed much in the intervening hundred years or so that we've been using them. Um, I have many monkey wrenches in my shop. Uh, I have five, five, okay, that's many. Um, I have a couple from Husky, which I really like. This is a kind of a basic model. This is one of their more advanced models. I can't speak to, uh, they all operate in similar ways, but let's talk about how they operate. So how does a pipe wrench work? Well, obviously any glance at a pipe wrench makes it clear that by activating this nut, you change the distance between the jaws. Similarly to the way a, a crescent wrench works, you change the nut here and it moves the jaws closer and farther apart. But therein the similarity ends because there are ways in which a pipe wrench is far better at its job than a crescent wrench. A crescent wrench should almost always be considered kind of emergency tool. Like you should always be using box end wrenches and sockets rather than crescent wrenches. Don't get me wrong, I use crescent wrenches all the time, but they're effectively professional corner rounders. Yeah, they, they, they can make life a lot harder. Pipe wrenches do what they do better than almost anything else you can think of. Um, and it starts with the jaws. You'll notice the jaws of the crescent wrench are parallel. The jaws of the pipe wrench, not parallel. No, 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 no. They are narrower at the back end than at the front. And that is how their functionality actually operates. So I've got a pipe here that I've mounted into the vise. Uh, there's a T and this length here is really tight in this T. This actually used to be my clothing rack in an old apartment I had. Um, so the way a pipe wrench works, if you went and did this with a crescent wrench, and this is for the fully uninitiated into wrench land, you, you don't have anything to grab onto with a crescent wrench. I mean, I guess with a crescent wrench, you can grab the outside of the T, and I have definitely done this if I had to, but it's not, it's far from optimal. Oh my God, it's so far from optimal. But with a crescent wrench, what you do is you adjust this nut, not until it's at the bottom, and not until it's at the outer front. You want it to be about halfway down. There you go. This is a, uh, a pipe wrench at its kind of an optimal distance. And what you'll notice is there are serrations on the jaws. And these serrations here are actually ratcheted back this way. And that's because all of the activity of the pipe wrench is about the relationship between these jaws and your lever action on this nice long handle. So when I set this onto the round pipe, um, the harder metal of the jaws bites a little bit into the metal of the pipe. That's by design. Now, when it bites, it's biting into a ratchet, so it doesn't want to go anywhere. In fact, because that ratchet's pointed up in that direction, it wants to dig deeper. So when I pull on this lever, and I am actually doing this for real now, I start to move the pipe. Yeah, and it takes way less effort. Now it, it does mark your pipe. That's part of using a pipe wrench. But then watch this. With just like one hand, I reactivate 
Ah, and so this is the best thing about a pipe wrench, is it grabs really hard, but lets go really easily. And you should never do this with plumbing that you haven't turned the water off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the caveats for home repair. This is only an introduction to pipe wrenches, not pipes or piping or plumbing of any kind. Uh, yeah, and if you are going, if you are going to add a pipe wrench to your shop collection, I recommend you buy two. Uh, again, like I said, Husky makes a bunch of different kinds. I have three or four. Uh, I have, I don't even know what this one, who makes this one? What is this? Pittsburgh. Um, you always want two pipe wrenches. You don't ever want to be in a situation where you need to and you don't have them. And they're fairly inexpensive. And hell, you can pick them up on eBay for like probably 10 bucks, an old rusted one. I have never found a pipe wrench that didn't work for me. The tolerances on these are all really, really loose. And while this looks like a primitive tool, I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm here to report that the only reason it looks primitive is because it's unchanged. And the reason it's unchanged is because this puppy works. Yeah, it sounds really good. All right, thank you guys for joining me for this tool tip today. I will see you next time. Good luck with your plumbing. <laughs>